All right, baby. You know that um, tech, tech is the new fossil fuel. Think about that. Bandwidth is the new oil. So, just a light thought. Just a light thought to get you uh, just acclimated, I guess, to whatever, to, or to nothing. To nothing, man. Hope you're having a good day. Hope I'm having a good day. I mean, that's really, that's the realest. I, um, I'm out here in the Central East. I did a, I did a skiing this past weekend in Tahoe. And they just shut it down again there because of the disease. I mean, I think you have more, you have, excuse me, you have a better chance of dang getting bit by a damn Sasquatch than you do dying from this disease, but I don't make the rules. You know, I'm just uh I'm just one human. And there's billions. So um but yeah, we had a nice time out there, went out there, did a performance actually for a company. This was called a corporate show. And those can be interesting. You show up and you don't know how it's going to be. Usually, you perform. Somebody complains to the boss. And, and somebody loses their job. That's usually what happens when they hire a comedian at a corporate show. I mean, I did one for Charmin a couple years ago. And there was almost a damn uh, fist fight at it. And how the hell people's fist fighting when they're supposed to be making toilet tissue... You know, that's beyond me, but that's that's on God, baby. But um what was I talking about? Oh, so we did it for this time, the company called Battleborn Batteries. Battleborn batteries, and they I thought at first, you know, Ari Manis accompanied me there and he said, Hey, we're doing the show is for Battleborn. And I thought he meant uh breach births. You know, C-sections, baby. And C-sections, let's be honest, man. There's A-section, uh, there's B-section, and then once you get to C-section, bro, it's really, damn, they'll pull anything out of your stomach at that point. It's A C-section, baby, is already, you know, that's like the remedial reading of children, man. If you're already getting a C and you haven't even, you're barely even alive. So a lot of times, I feel like we should probably do contact tracing on C-section babies. You know, they should tag them like they do. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll you'll see a a rare egret or a damn uh, corm cor cor cormorant, and it'll show up on your property and uh, have a tagging on. And from far off, it looks like a bracelet. It looks like he went to a nightclub the night before. You know, looks like he might have spent all night out at the stinking nest with his buddies. Or, uh, you know, over at the slippery branch or whatever, you know. But it turns out it's a tagging. Government comes and they'll put a damn wristband on a, uh, on a falcon. You know, they'll put a damn stopwatch on a, uh, on a Jayhawk. So they know what they're doing. I mean, that's how, when you think about how crazy the government is, that's crazy, man. That's pretty crazy, but. What was I talking Yeah, so Battleborn Batteries, that's the company. And it's just a company. And they do batteries and they do, uh, I guess, special hardcore batteries that'll survive anything. A snowstorm, flooding, funeral, you know, uh, second coming. I mean, Jesus could pass through town and that damn battery will still be working. But uh, so anyway, we had a good time with that company and it went well. Sometimes, you know, when you invite a comedian to an HR issue, it can be a real, you know, to a company, it can be a real issue. So 
but we had a nice time and beautiful people over there this fella sean and uh and a, just a great group of guys man and and women too guys and women baby both genders son so what else man oh god oh somebody brush my teeth I can't even handle that sometimes. Oh, I'll tell you this. We saw a lady. We were at the casino in the gift shop at night. And a lady in there, this is an adult. This is an adult lady. So this ain't no novice, you know. This isn't a first time into a snack play. I mean, this lady, she sounded like an alien, though. She was talking on, it was like kind of like a diverse lady talking on the phone, on Face, uh, not FaceTime, FaceTime audio or whatever, you know, uh, and the person on the other end is like, what do they have? And she's in this gift shop and she named everything that they have. She's like, they got, uh, they got Rolos, they got, um, Lay's. Uh, ruffles. Um, they got uh Pringles. Uh, they got green Pringles, orange Pringles, uh, purple Pringles. Um, they got these like kind of little like like kind of brown mazes with salt on them, like these little like figure eights. Oh, pretzels. Um. They got neckties, they got clip-on, they got Dove ice cream, they got drumstick, uh, they got Butterfinger, they got certs, they got raspberry certs, they got uh, they got five-hour energy, they got six-hour energy, they got uh, this, and the person like, what do they have? And then she, bro, she would start on a whole new thing. They got t-shirts, they got um, they got Welcome to Reno t-shirts. They got uh they got a neck brace, they got we uh they got um playing cards, they got Hershey Kiss. Um what do they have? They have um they got uh what else? They got cinnamon whiskey, they got gin, uh they got sunglasses, they got um they got whatchamacallits, uh they got uh Kahlua. What what uh and then she, every now and then, she was like, let me go ask them if they have that. Let me go ask them if they have that. And she would go over to the counter. <laughs> oh, bro. It just didn't make any sense, man. I mean, it literally made no sense. They got gummy bears. They got smoked salmons. They got um coffee. Oh. But, man... That's humanity. And where would we be without? I mean, we were dying laughing. I, it just, it was so hard to be in the store and watch this lady just do this. Just literally on Facebook. Oh, they got, um, they got milk. They got chocolate milk. They got diet milk. Um, they got, uh, Twizzlers. They got, uh, Red Vines. Dear God. Speaking of God, thank you guys uh, for being here and being a part of my life today and helping me get through this. Uh, just life. Help me get through life. You know, life, uh, it was a surprise to all of us. It really was. Uh, today's musical intro is by Larry Fleet, Where I Find God. It's a, It's a country song, I think, but it's a... There's something really human about it, man. And uh, it'll hit you right in the stair steps. Gang, brother. Come on, Lair. They got Rolos. The night I hit rock bottom. They're sitting on an old bar stool. He paid my tab and put me in a cab But he didn't have to so he could see I was hurting Come on, baby Oh, I wish I'd got his name Cause 
Cause I didn't feel worth saving But he saved me just the same Come on, hold with me, baby. I put my pole down, I floated around. Come on, Larry. It was just so quiet. And I could hear my old man saying, son, just be still. Come on, baby. Let's go. Can't find peace like this. Can't find peace like this. And a bottle or a pill. Come on. Y'all got to go get on that right there. That's Larry Fleet, Where I Find God. And it is powerful, man, when you think about that, where you find God. You know, I remember place times in my life where I found him. Uh, you know, there's a. When I go to my mother's house, sometimes I like to lay on her bed and sometimes uh, the sun will just kind of hit her bed coming in from the window. And and that, there's just something about that space and that that moment, that, that little, that time where I feel like there's, like, you know, I feel God then. Um... When I see, when you see a little baby, when you see a little baby, do something, you know, and not something staged like they had those two little kids hugging on the internet. I mean, something real, you know, when you see a little baby hug his parent or, you know, uh, learn something new when you see something in his eyes, he's learning something new, you know, I think there's moments like that where you, you just feel like that's God just making another stitch in the quilt, you know. And that's where he puts his uh, thread through and brings it back out. Things like that. There's little things that keep you holding on, you know. When you see your grandmother laugh. You know, when, you, when one of your friends has a child, you know, a close friend. Um... I think it's just, you know, God is that, he's that soapy water, man. He's going to find his way through the cracks. And uh, and I love that song, man, Larry Fleet, Where I Find God. And some people don't have a God, and that's okay, man. Um, I, I think it's a tough way to go through life. I've struggled in my life with my relationship with the higher power. And, uh, and some days it's stronger than others, and some days it's not there at all. Uh, but um but man that song that song helps me i don't know it's some something you know music has that power music has that power man help you do some things that you can't do by yourself and some of those things are things that your feelings want to do and places they want to go and a song really is just a you know it's just a bunch of sounds that are a key and if they're right, man, sometimes it'll unlock you. And it'll unlock you to love. It'll unlock you to dance. It'll unlock you to 
some of the shit will unlock you to damn start a fire, you know, or to lift weights. I mean, it's just the the the, the, the music. You know, every song, every beat, kind of, it's a different tickle. And some of them tickle you on the side, and some of them tickle you in the damn ass, and some of them just damn tickle you in the neck, and it's just, you know, it's a, they're all, it's all a different game, but. Anyway, good to be here with you today, man. That's Larry Fleet, where I find God. You can check that out. Um, so, do they have, oh, do they have gobstoppers? Uh, they have, um, unbelievable. What's going on? I, I'm still looking for a vehicle. So I've been trying to do CarMax. And CarMax is like, it's kind of like a lost and found for vehicles, but you got to pay for them. And I'm waiting. I really want a Ford Ranger, like a 2019 maybe. So I'm hopeful for that. Um, I went and looked at some houses the past two days. That was good. Went to the doctor. Um, dude, I went, so I went to the doctor, right? And I go into the doctor's office and, um, well, I went to the first black doctor I've ever been to. And it was just interesting. I, I never, it never in my head ever crossed my mind that, you know, I've seen black doctors on television. Uh, I've thought about black doctors, you know. African American doctors, black doctors. And but I'd never been to one. So I go in and there was there's just like there was it was just it just came to my attention. You know, and it doesn't make me racist, that doesn't make me wrong or anything. It just I, I first I was like, "Dang, I wonder." Cuz then I thought that black people probably have been going to a lot of Maybe I've been going to a lot of white doctors their whole life. I don't know. I mean, when I was growing up, they didn't have black doctors. Except for Cliff Huxtable. You know, Bill Cosby. And he was, uh, you know, he was doing rapes. So, but that don't mean nothing. I mean, he was, on the show, he wasn't. On the show, he was just doctoring. This one, he was just still, you know, doing, uh, you know, birth. Yeah, I think he was a baby doctor. So he was, at, you know, this is, that's way after rape, you know, that's that's babies. So anyway, I just had never been to a black doctor. I just had never, I'd never been there because they didn't have it when I was growing up. And then in LA, a lot of, the, I guess, yeah, I don't know, I've been to some Middle Eastern, I've just never been to a black doctor. So anyway, and then I thought, man, it must be wild because a lot of black kids when I was young probably had to grow up going to white doctors. And if you have like a lot of racial questions in your head, you go in there, dude, I bet you're wondering like, is this white doctor going to save me? You know? Um, it was definitely interesting. I started talking to a friend of mine about it and they said, well, uh, to a black friend of mine and they said, well, you know, a lot of black people, will like, that's why they like to go to black churches because people sometimes will... You know, people, there's just a, you know, there's a tribal kind of instinct sometimes, especially I think if you're thinking about going to heaven. Um, or at least there used to be. I don't know if it's that much anymore because I'll see like uh, Joel Osteen videos and it's, I mean, it's so diverse at his crowds. And um, so this is probably just an older you know, just some older stuff, but it was just really interesting. I just got in there and I was like, is this guy, is he, is he going to know? Because I think part of my wonder was, is it feel different to be black? Like, just does it physically feel different? Like if I explain to him a white pain or just a pain that I have in my white body, is it going to, does it register the same to him? You know, like... I don't know. It was just interesting. Um, and he was great, man. Super, super nice young guy. Um, you know, but it was definitely, it was just interesting because I'd never been. I'm like, if I, 
you know, if I say there's something hurts in my back, does it, like, does he have the same feeling? It was just, it was interesting. And I think, yeah, in churches, I think people think sometimes, oh man, it's, will, it, can I get to heaven or will I get, you know, is this worship lead? Like, do they have the same, like if I, if I'm white, do I gotta get, you know, do I, do I, do I need a white person to help me get to heaven? If I'm black, do I need a black person to help me get to heaven? Um, so it was, it was just an, it was just an interesting thing that happened, man. I didn't play, I just walked in and I was like, what? I never. So I was like, yeah, I think I'm at, you know, on my, my antidepressants aren't working and but he was totally, he was awesome, man. So, uh, not that he wouldn't be, but it was just a new experience, bro. So it made me think like, dang, when I was young, all of my friends that were black had to go to white doctors. Probably Cause I don't know if they had black doctors back then. And if you lived in a household where you had family members saying like white people or there were or white people, the devil or something, then how would... It, it, imagine how awkward it would be to go get a diagnosis then from a white doctor. It must have been, I don't know, it must have just been wild. I don't know, man. Uh, but that's some stuff, you know, that's just kind of what's been going on. I've been doing some yoga at home. I uh, did a show here the other night in Nashville. So thank you to everybody that came through. Uh, I've been doing some yoga, man. Here's how I do yoga. People want to say, well, Theo, how do you do yoga? This is what I do. So I'm renting an Airbnb right now. And that's where you just get a place for a little while. And it's kind of sketchy. I mean, you could do, you could run a whorehouse. You could do whatever you want. But I'm just doing life, just sleeping, eating, uh, that sort of deal. So I put on yoga with Adrian. And it's this white girl based out of um, Austin. Uh, yeah, based out of Austin. And so um, they got barbecue chips. Um, so anyway, I put it on. I'll put my mat out. I got one of the long mats. There's different lengths of yoga mats you can get. I get the long one. There's nothing... I hate more than the yoga mat that's a little short whenever you're like doing it and your kind of foot's hanging off the back and it's kind of like when you have a shirt on that's a little too short. It's like, Ugh. so I get the long one. I'll light a couple candles. I'll cut out the I'll cut out the house lights. I light a few candles, bro. A little couple seance pieces, you know. And a lot of my candles have been used in seancery. So. Um, so, you know, I'm not surprised I'm in a downward dog and a damn, you know, a, you know, a ghost travels right up under my ass, bro. That's where I'm at. So anyway, uh, I'll put on yoga with Adrian. There's like about 10 different ones I like to do. I'll light a couple candles unscented. I don't need, you know, I don't need to be smelling peppermints while I'm laying there. Do that peppermint. They got peppermints. They got, um, mint juleps. They got um, Wrigley's. Uh, so that's it. I'll lay out the mat. I put on a couple candles. I'll put it on my computer. I'll turn my email off so the thing doesn't ding. And I'll do a good session, man. And I start to like it more and more, and it makes me feel pretty good. Uh, but I do yoga with Adrian. And, um, and I noticed the reason I like her is, for one, she goes really step by step. And two, her voice. There's something about the cadence and the volume of her voice that's just, it helps me just travel through yoga. You know, just like I was saying earlier about different songs, different sounds um, have a different gravitas to them. And they stick to you different. And some of them will fill your ears up and some of them will just ga make you gassy in your head. Like you got damn ass, you know, like you got ass in your head, bro. And I think that's why, you know, people like different music because certain, some people like a tambourine. 
I don't mind a tambourine maybe for a little while in like a Janis Joplin song. Or maybe subtly if Leon Bridges is hitting something kind of hardy. But I don't, dude, somebody just loosen, just loose goosing around with a tambourine, bro. Do they have weapons? They got guns. Dude, I can't, I'll, uh, I can't handle that. Somebody about to get slaughtered out. So, um, but yeah, that's what's new with me, man. I'm just, you know, uh, just going to diverse doctors because you also think like, man, if this, if this doctor has like some kind of, like, would they have some kind of vendetta where they're going to prescribe me a, you know, a damn, you know, a, you know, a tart transplant. But then I think, man, black people must have thought that forever if they always had to go to white doctors or, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know if they had a lot of black. I, and I'm also referencing when I was growing up. I just don't know if they had a black doctor when I was growing up. And I didn't know at the time I was a child. I don't know where black, you know, I just thought black kids always look pretty healthy to me. They were the, you know, most athletic. They just seemed like they was always doing pretty good. So, but I don't know, man, just, I never thought about it. Where were black kids going to the doctor when I was a kid? Um, I mean, it was a small town. We probably all went to the same damn doctor, dude. Um, let's get into some calls. Some calls came in. We got some, some unique things. Um, we had, uh, that call that came in about the PS5, which was really nice, uh, last week. And, uh, somebody wanting to share that. Uh, let's see what we can uh, get into right here. Here we go. And thank you guys for being a part of this past weekend. If you have any thoughts on anything that's ever discussed on here or mentioned, you can call the hotline, 985-664-9503. Uh, we're open to any constructive criticisms always here. And Merry Christmas to everybody, gang. Hey, Theo. Name's Caden. Uh, man, I just got to get your thoughts on, on the vaping stuff. Man, a couple of my buddies have been hitting that sparky nasty here for a while, and they've been, they done switched over to the jewel or the, the vape, whatever. And, uh, man, I, I don't know what to think about it, man. They just keep trying to get me to, to hit on that thing, and, man, I don't know about hitting on the toker. Man, I got to get your thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. Holla back at me. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you so much there, Caden. And, uh, yeah, because jeweling is different. People do jeweling. You'll see somebody, they got a, you know. Hey, do you jewel? Oi, oi, oi. Just gargling vowels. Just, hey, You jewel? Dude, when I was young, jewel was a child person's name. So if somebody said, you jewel? I would be like, no, I'm Theo. Who is she? <laughs> um... And now, yeah, the kids got everything. You know, they got tiramisu flavored watermelon, bro. Dog, when I was doing it, you had to hit that cigarette, baby. Like a damn man. You had to stand there like a just a fucking loose piece of forest fire. Just. You, had, you know what I'm saying? You had to, a smoker had to smoke. There wasn't no secret. Hey, you know, this thing also doubles as a hard drive. You can keep up like just like 60 JPEGs on here. Do uh, you do you do? And y'all got all kind of flavor. They got lasagna. They got everything, man. They got regular mint. They got cement. They got menthol, peanut butter, bro. Everything, man. They got lactate. Somebody just hitting a damn lactate jewel. Say their bowels can't handle regular jewel. Bitch, what? When I was young, you had to smoke. And you had to risk getting busted. That's another thing about a jewel. I see people jeweling on the plane. I see people just blowing into their pocket. Blowing in, into the dog's mouth. They got a little rescue dog on there with them. Little schnauz or a note. You know, they chimney and that bitch up. When I was young, you had to smoke. You had to go hard. 
and you had to blow yet i blow it and there was no hide in that smoke that shit was the industrial revolution baby i mean you look like a damn sawmill out there just hitting winston's and you smelled like it now somebody comes in the house they're out there they've been hitting that cherry or that paprika you know, somebody comes in the house and they've been hitting uh, the, the uh, ricotta. They just did 40 grams of ricotta cheese jewel outside. It's just different, man. This shit is weak now. So I say put it down, baby. Put it down and pick up a real cigarette. Pick up that real killer, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Have some honor. Get Japanese with it. Pick up a real cigarette and hit that bastard. Because you out here hitting these fake ass. Dude, it can store up to like 30 JPEGs in it. Yeah, man. And it's peach cobbler flavored. Bitch, I don't care. Get that old dog. I remember hitting a Marlboro Red, bro. Made one of my eyes close for a month. I remember that shit was for real. And you had to come back to the table, smell. You had to hide the smell. You over there rubbing gum all over you in the garage, trying to, you spraying double D, double D 40 on your buddy, trying to get the smoke off of him. Everybody, you and you, you come back to the Thanksgiving table, smell like a damn oil change. But you had to go through something. Now you got people sucking out, out here, sucking on a damn USB port. Dude, my buddy's in the uh, Jewel. Uh, he's a professional. Yeah, he's in the semis in Reno this weekend. Put it down. Y'all ain't doing shit, bruh. Pick up a regular cigarette, dude. Smoke them for 20, 30 years. Watch your skin give in a little. And then go see the Lord. Have some respect for yourselves. Uh. So that's what I think of Jewel, man. It's hard to go off on that, but I had to let you know, man. Um, what else, dude? Here we got a call that came in. Uh, and I'm also going to let you know right now that if you need help, look, and I need it, man. I've been seeing a therapist uh, on line and in person, and it's going good. And I'm not giving up. My brother made me commit that I would go see a therapist for one year. Um, so I'm glad he's holding me accountable to that a little bit and, uh, and I need it, you know, I need it. Um, so what I'm telling you right now is that better help is there for you. Better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating fast. The service is available worldwide. You know, I remember in my, in my town I grew up in, I might've been a little bit, you know, nervous or if I go see the therapist, well, hell, I play basketball with her husband. So is she going to tell him? What's he going to think? You know, and well, he and I both went to school together. And is that going to be weird? And she and I went to school together. Hell, I she rejected me four times. Is it going to be weird now that I'm in there just telling her what's wrong with me? Yeah, well, it could be. I don't know. But if it is, then there's better help. Better help is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. And join the over 500,000 people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And I know that actually... It's more than a million people now. Special offer for this past weekend listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Theo. 10% off your first month, betterhelp.com slash Theo. No one is going to know except you and your therapist. If you want to just Zoom, if you want to just text, if you want to just email, if you want to FaceTime, all those are options through BetterHelp. I've used it and you can too. Today's episode is also brought to you by Raycon's newest model, the perfect Christmas gift, the everyday E25 earbuds. They're the best ones yet. Six hours of playing time, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass. Uh, 
a more compact design, a noise-isolating fit. Raycon earbuds are stylish and discreet. No dangling wires or stems. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like J.R. Smith, Mike Tyson, Rich the Kid, Melissa Etheridge. Give them a try. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy. So there you go, right there. You get this Christmas gift for somebody. Somebody who needs it. Somebody who wants more bass. Somebody who wants their, uh, their earbuds to last longer. Raycon has a free 45-day return policy so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. The newest model, the E25, it's the best ones yet. They're premium wireless earbuds. You can get them at half the price of the other guys. For a limited time, get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash Theo. That's B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash T-H-E-O for a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. Make sure to check it out now while the deal's running. Buyraycon.com slash Theo. So let's go to another call here. The hotline, 985-664-9503. Hey, buddy. Hey, Theo. Uh, this is Ryan. Um, I want to get your thoughts on what it means that, uh, you know, the UFOs are definitely real now and, like, whether that kind of, I don't know, affects us as, as human beings, uh, makes you think about, you know, time travel and stuff like that. Um, just in general, does it impact your, your daily thinking that you can, you know, look up at the sky and say, watch out there. All right, buddy. Thanks a lot. Uh, gang, gang. Thank you for the call, Ryan. You know, recently they had a thing, an article, and it said, uh, Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it. He said a galactic federation has been waiting for humans to reach a stage where we will understand what space and spaceships are. Haim Eshed has said this. Um, said the aliens were equally curious about humanity and we're seeking to understand the fabric of the universe. Uh, and he said that they have been waiting until today for humanity to develop and reach a stage where we will all understand in general what space and spaceships are. They also added that President Donald Trump was aware of the extraterrestrials' existence and had been on the verge of revealing information but was asked not to in order to prevent mass hysteria. According also to the report, uh, Haim, uh, the former head of Israeli's defense ministry space directorate, told an Israeli newspaper that Earthlings have been in contact with a galactic federation and that there's an underground base in the depths of Mars where there are American astronauts and alien representatives. Uh, look, you know, to answer your question, Ryan, you said that we know now that they're real. We, I don't know. I don't know if I believe any news that comes out anymore. It's all subject to what you believe. So I think the news used to be, you know, there was a level of what we thought was reality of it to it. And I don't know if that's the case anymore. I really don't. Um, so do I know if this article is legit? I have no idea. You think that there's like a board meet? It makes it sound like there's a meeting every year and the aliens decide if we're ready to see the aliens. I don't know. That sounds like they're like, well, how's this year been? And you're like, well, um, you know, uh, well, we, you know, we're arriving at the PS5 right now. And there is we have picture frames that can change the picture. You know, and they're solar powered. So we're, you know, we're still struggling to recycle, but uh, that's where we're at. And then it's like rejected. And then the next year they're like, are you, how, all right, guys, how's things this year? You ready to accept aliens? And they're like, well, we're having like a lot of widespread racial disputes. And, um, but we do, you know, there is a new popular like bidet attachment that people are buying for their toilets. So they don't have to wipe their butt. It's like, uh, rejected. 
dude, we're ne- it, it, it reminds me of that scene in um, Shawshank Redemption where he keeps going every year to try to get denied, 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 denied. And then finally, Brooks was here, baby. I'm going to kill myself by the grocery. Praise God, baby. Um, so, yeah, that just seems weird that there's a meeting every year and that there's, like, discussion. I just can't. Until people are ready, we will never be ready. People are beating the shit out of each other for PS5s. At, and the malls aren't even open. Think about that. There are shooting. I'm sure there's a shooting right now. If you put your ear up to a bowl of dirty water, you can hear a shooting in Flint, Michigan right now. Probably for a pair of children's Aurora skates. We are not ready for aliens. Now, some positives, I think, is it would give us all somebody to battle against. Because I'll tell you straight up, bro. Some alien shows up over there in Memphis or something. Some brother's going to pop him off, bro. Real talk. Or if he shows up out there in Oregon, a couple of white dudes going to sneak over and abduct his ass, you know? Make a chili out of him. So, I don't know. I mean, I mean the whole the alien thing always, to me, do I think that we're the only people here? Like, the only beings? I don't know. And people say, well, it's selfish to think that. Well, I don't think it. I don't know. I think we're in the very kinder years of learning about all of that kind of stuff. The simple fact that we're still operating on fuels like, uh, you know, gasoline and um, whatever else they're using, octane. I think in the future, people will be able to fucking travel on a good idea, you know. You'll have a couple good ideas and that'll fill up your idea cube and then you'll be able to use the lightning created from that to migrate to different areas. I think, you know, we're just on this, we're on this very novice plane right now. So, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be interesting down the, down the line. Now, I do think this about aliens. I think it's wild that aliens always trying to get in everybody's booty and body. Everybody that gets abducted by aliens, they trying to fuck them, bro. I mean, who are they? You know what I'm saying? Are aliens just a bunch of, like, just dudes? Like, a bunch of drunk dudes in Vegas or something? Because every time they pick somebody up, the first thing they tell people is they try to touch, you know, you know, touch inside their booties. And that makes me sad, bro, but but that's aliens, man. So do we even want to know these people? What if you what if every time you introduce your, you know, your somebody to your friend uh Amos and Amos try to sneak up in their ass while they doing something. You know, they at the house, they looking for a little, you know, their car keys and Amos tries to slip in them cheeks, bro. You'd say, "Hey Amos, dude, you got to go home." So that's the thing. That's aliens. That's aliens, boy. And yeah, I don't know. If aliens showed up here on Earth, we're still, I mean, we're basically probably the Denny's of the galaxy. When you think of that. Nobody's stopping here. We got a couple of fucking, uh, a couple of gas-powered jets that can go... you know, that travel around, like, dude, they're not, they're like, what are y'all doing over here with these paper airplanes? Y'all need to freaking throw a battle-born battery into one of these things and really see the, see the future. Um, what else? That's all I had, man, on that. So are they real? I hope we find out. Here's the shitty thing. What if you don't get to find out in your lifetime? Oh, I mean, you won't know, but still, you'll know toward the end. I bet that's a lot of people last thought. Man, fuck. 
Do they have Fritos? Um, they got um, they got Hostess cakes. They got ice cream. They got white ice cream. They got brown ice cream. So, uh, what else we got here? Let's take another call right here, and then we're gonna get uh into that PS Five. Let's get into that PS Five, man. Here we go, right here. This was the call that came in last week. We had a fellow named Kenny from Portland who wanted to help out a single mom. Uh, I had an idea here. I have a PlayStation 5 that I got from my work. Uh, I'm not really a big gamer, but I would like to offer that to one of your struggling single moms. So if you have any ladies out there that are trying to make their kid happy on the holiday, I have a PlayStation 5 that I'd be willing to donate. Uh, only because your show gives me hours of entertainment throughout the week. Uh, you're very positive. I love the things that you have to say, and uh, gang, gang. Gang, brother. Thank you, man. You know, I needed to hear that again today. You know, I need constant reminders to put myself in a good place. Um, and we did. We had some calls that came in, man. And uh, here, was, uh, here was the first one that came in. And so I feel like that that's kind of the fairest way to go about it. Hey, Theo. This is Mike from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Just wanted to say, gang, gang, love everything you're doing. Appreciate everything you're doing as well. Um, I was just calling. I watched your Thanks Living episode, and I heard a gentleman call in saying he was offering up one of those PlayStation 5 hitters to a uh, single mother. And I just wanted to maybe nominate my, my sister. She works really hard. She has two kids. Uh, one's eight, one's ten. They're real big into video games, so I thought that would be perfect for them. Um, if you haven't already chosen someone, I'd really like you to consider her. Her name's Dana. Um, she lives in Maryland with my two nephews, and they're they're great kids. And she's an awesome mom. So really appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you, thank you, Mike. I didn't mean to cut you off there, man. But um, yeah, we're gonna we'll connect you with Kenny, and um, and you know that's Kenny, man. That's Kenny helping out there, thinking that he won something at at at, at a work or however he won it. And then he can give it away, man. That's really beautiful. Um, we just we had some nice calls that came in, and I didn't think like, man, yeah, it's kind of a bummer that it was grateful. It's grateful that that uh, we're able to connect the dots there and and help the kiddos get a PS Five. Um, those things are hot commodity, bro. Damn, dude, somebody be dying of cancer. You offer them some plasma, they say no, but you hit them with that pss, five, and they want it, bro. So, but I thought, hey, we could hit a couple of people back and see what else we could do. Let me, um, let's see if we can call that guy, though. Dang, he's not home. Uh, I was going to call him in, in person and just, you know, just tell him hello. And uh, so then what I'm going to say is this, man. Let's think about this. So um, what I'm talking about is uh, let's hit some other people up. We got this call that came in. Let's hear it. Hey, Theo. West from Minneapolis, man. I uh, was just listening to this past weekend. I heard the guy call in about the PS5 for a single mom, and uh, I got an excellent single mom that uh, she's uh, working to get her kid back. She has them about half the year right now, and she's going to have them over Christmas. Um, she, she took me in about two months ago, a really good friend, and helped me out of a really hard situation, helped me get on my feet staying there right now I, she ain't making me pay nothing and man she has a really great kid who was here over thanksgiving and he'll be back for christmas and he's a big gamer and you know she she manages a gas station so she's out there grinding every day but you know it'd be great to give him a, a, a great christmas that he can remember amen brother i think we can help out with that um let me give you a buzz right now see what we can do Nobody want to answer their phone anymore. Everybody think it's the uh, government. Hello. What's up, Wes, bro? How you living, man? Good. Who's this? This is Theo, man. Theo Vaughn, the comedian. Oh, get out of town, man. What's going on with you, Cat Daddy? What's up, brother? Not much, brothers. Looking for the Lord. You know me, boy. Amen. Amen. Damn. Dude, my buddy said the other day, I said, dude, I'm looking for the Lord. My buddy said, dude, the Lord ain't lost. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> he's everywhere. He's everywhere, man. How's your day going? Good, man. I'm just at work, man. My boss had me run down to FedEx to drop off this package. I sell cars, man, and uh, I'm selling a car out of state. I had to FedEx some papers overnight, so I'm on the road right now. Nice, baby. Uh, well, thanks for picking up, yeah. man. Yeah, I appreciate your call, man. It's really nice of you to call just that you left on the uh, hotline. Um, yeah. We'd already found somebody had already had called before they got the PS5, but we have uh, there's a company that helps us out sometimes. This company called Magic Mind, and they wanted to offer uh, a PS4 or I think it's a PS4 and a television. Maybe I don't know if the kiddo would you know if that would be something that they would like. Man, that would be amazing, dude. You have no idea how awesome you just made my day. Awesome, bro. Well, dude, it's nice of you to think about somebody else, man. You know. Man, she helped me out. I was in a really bad spot. I moved to Texas for a year, and it uh, didn't really work out. I had a issue with a roommate that ended up turning violent, man. I had to leave. It was just crazy. And she said, you know, I've never really been in a position to help somebody, and I'm in that position now, and you're a good friend. Come on up. And she's just been helping me get back on my feet, man. Got a job. and She's, she's great, man. She's great. You couldn't be going to a nicer person. Amen, bro. Well, that's awesome, dude. That makes me feel good, bro. Yeah. For so, sure. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, just thanks for thinking of somebody else. And um, Hell yeah, man. I'll uh, I'll just follow up with you. I'll hit you up after, or uh, the producer Sean or Nick will hit you up after and just get it uh set up. But yeah, I think I, I can't remember exactly what he donated, but I think he donated a PS4 and a television. So uh, that's so amazing, man. I I saw this call coming from Louisiana, and I was like. <laughs> Here comes another motherfucker saying that my car or my my car's warranty needs <laughs> needs to get uh, extended or something. <laughs> hey, man, bro, look, that's gonna be the next call, baby. That's the next call. Right. So, yeah, actually, awesome, I, want, I want to talk to you right now about your warranty extension, Wes. If you have a minute. <laughs> oh damn, they got me. <laughs> well, bro, look, man, keep living the way you're living, man. I'm proud of you, bro. And I'm just, you know, I'm just grateful that you called in, man. It's cool, dude. Amen, man. I appreciate you, man. I listen to you all the time, so I really appreciate the call. It's so great to hear from you. Dude, you made me feel good, man. I appreciate it, man. Have a good day, dude, and we'll circle up with you, bro, and thanks for thinking of somebody else, man. Awesome. Peace. All right, gang. Damn, that hit me in the feelings a little bit, man. What else can we do here? Let me see what else we can do here. Man, it's nice of him to think about that lady. You know, it's hard in our lives to reach out and say, I can help you. Especially these days, there's so many barriers that get, that, that get put up, you know. You know, I, you know, I get, as long as I'm safe in my home and I'm in my place and I, you know, it'll be uncomfortable and just, we've gotten so kind of separate sometimes that, Helping other people used to be kind of, I think, kind of an in, more of an innate thing. And now it's because we've gotten so solitary, it almost feels weird sometimes, I think. Isn't that strange that it feels weird to help somebody to invade in their life? And as a society, even, we're getting more to like, oh, if you need help, go to the government, go to the city go to the you know it's no longer like um oh what can i can i help and i think a lot of people do still think that way but i think just as a society we um or not can i help but what how can i help or i don't know i'm not judging anybody i'm not saying that i'm just thinking out loud i'm just um I think I kind of had, I felt like I hadn't really done anything nice for somebody in a while and then just thinking about that and, and I didn't even do anything. You know, that's Magic Mind who hit me up today and said that they wanted to donate. And But uh, let me see, man. Here we got one. Let's take it. Hi, Theo. My name is Tim Carter. Um, I sincerely, just honest to God, I really hope you hear this. Um so I I live in Portland, Oregon, and I uh, heard Kenny call in with his donation of a PlayStation 5, and I would like to nominate um, a lady that I know. Uh, her name is Larissa, 
and she has a seven-year-old daughter named Annabelle. And um, last year, <laughs> right before COVID, they moved to Portland from McMinnville uh, to take a, a new job. Um, the, the new job opportunity almost immediately didn't work out once she got here. COVID set in, and she actually had to become like a full-time Uber and Lyft driver. Well, I figure let's call in right now and see what we can do. <phone rings> loud. Why is this loud? Hello? Hey, what's up, man? This is Theo Vaughn, bro. Uh, I'm calling just about, you called a couple, um a couple days ago about the uh about the podcast about the we we're talking about the PlayStation. Yes, sir. My gosh. I wow. How are you? Thank you so much for calling. Oh, I'm doing good, man. Tim, is this Tim? This is Tim. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, man. No worries, man. Thank you for calling, bro. Uh yeah, I just appreciate it, man. I thought your message was really nice and um, you know, I just thought, you know, thanks for even checking out the podcast and for, you know, just thinking about somebody else uh especially this time of year. Um, we, Can I just, um, before I forget, because I I just think that you're probably pound for pound. The, I, I don't want to, I hopefully you won't take this the wrong way, but I think that you're so underrated, dude. I, I just think you, just how you are and the things that you do and the things that you say, there could never be another character or comedian or just, entertainer like you you are so unique and i appreciate you so much so i just wanted to get that out of the way first of all so thank thanks you. bro well it's nice of you to say man yeah you know it's funny when you say that just now i think there's something about if somebody says that you're unique like i think in my life i just want to be unique i think we all want to you know uh but i think i've always had some weird obsession with it i think um but that's really kind of you to say that man that's, that's very thoughtful uh my pleasure yeah, dude. So we gave away the PlayStation. Somebody else had called before you, but we wanted to. We want to do something nice. So I'm trying to think. What do you think we could do? I mean, we we, you know, we could give. Uh, what What do you think she could use? You know, um, when I think of her, I I kind of think of just the difficulties that she's gone through in this transition, and probably the what I would think about more is probably just her little daughter. Mm -hmm. Her little daughter wants to be um, a, a YouTube sensation so bad. She likes to play this game called Roblox and she likes to make her own little videos and mm -hmm. she's very enthusiastic and everything. And of course her being a single mom, you know, she's been home uh, during COVID the, for like the last, however long, seven, eight months. And she just moved up here and had, uh, just to give you a super, super short backstory. So she was, when I met her, she was going through some uh, sexual harassment turmoil in her work. Mm -hmm. And so um, I I kind of gave her a little bit of money, a little bit of momentum to, to come to Portland. And then when she moved, she dropped everything to come up here and take a job. And then COVID hit and they weren't able to offer her the position. So, mm. um, so That's... yeah. And then it just hasn't, I know it's such a hard question. I I don't know what... Yeah, and it might have been a little too, uh, you know, it might be too open ended or something. I don't know what they call a question that, like, you, you know, it's just too vague. But, um, so let me think, man. So I'm thinking, you know, why don't we, we'll set, what, maybe we could just at least set you guys up with like a gift card or something, maybe to Best Buy or to some other place where if she wants to get like a, you know, a YouTube cam or something like, you know, I, I don't know, maybe a, a I don't know what some of the cameras are called, but Nick will know, man. So why don't we um, why don't we set you guys up with a five hundred dollar gift card to uh, to a place that could be helpful? And I'll have Nick or Sean call, and uh, and you can just give us her information, and um, and we'll go from there. Wow, Theo, I just I just don't know what to say, man. I just I wasn't expecting this at all, and I think that's a great idea. And I think yeah, that's just open ended, and she can do with it. You know, and that'll be just such a great Christmas. This is her first Christmas in Portland, and that'll oh, that'll just be so awesome, so awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. You know, I don't know, I don't know these people, but it's just you know, it's your own kindness and your own thinking about somebody else. And um, you know, it's funny that guy calls and he offers a PlayStation, and I wasn't even thinking today, like, oh, let's think of ways we can do things or give out anything. And uh, and it just kind of it's funny how one thing like that kind of spurns the other ones, you know. 
Well, and I was worried too, like when I listened to the episode and first of all, I think that was also the Robert Finley episode and my dad loved that song, but, um, quick side note there. Yeah, that's a good song, dude. You got to take it. <laughs> you can get it. But I think, um, I was worried that maybe, you know, everybody was going to call in and maybe somebody like me would call in and you think, oh, well, this guy just wants the PlayStation for himself or whatever. So I'm glad that the, the phone call came across as sincere. Yeah, no, it did. I thought it for a second, but then I quit thinking it, man. But that's just that's just something inside of me that always wants to think the devil first, you know. Well, cool, man. Well, look, I think it's a thoughtful gesture, and uh, I'm glad that we could be a part of it, man. And, um, yeah, I'll have the guys follow up. And Merry Christmas, Brian. You just pass it on to her and just let her know that uh, just that people are thinking about her, even if sometimes she feels like maybe people aren't or maybe she doesn't feel that way at all. But just let her know people are always thinking of her. My God, Theo, and you have a great Christmas, man. God bless you, and yeah, keep keep pushing, man, because you're gonna you're gonna get to that Bill Burr level. You're just uh, once people see you, man. Once enough people see you, it's the sky's the limit for your talent. I just know it. Well, thanks, bro. I appreciate it, man. It's been a uh, even in a rough year. It's been an okay year, man, and I'm grateful to have the podcast and just to have you know to know that there's other people out there that are, um, you know, that just as a group we don't give up. You know, we keep uh, just trying our best. So, all right, gang, Tim, bro, be good, man. Okay, thank you. All right, cheers, brother. Man, that was nice of him, man. That was nice. That's cool. You know, because now in my head, I picture maybe she gets a little money. She does something kind of fun, something extra, just some little thing maybe she wasn't thinking. Maybe she's going to get a little breakfast. You know, my mom used to like, uh, she would do something like a nice pancake breakfast, but we had this gas powered skillet this thing was limited time they sold it and uh and it burned a hole in the um in the table one year but uh what else do we have man um hmm let me see what this call hi Theo this is Susie again um I called you earlier left a message um I'm a um, single mom. I have been looking for this PS5 everywhere. Um, I'm from Michigan, and I'm trying to get it for my daughter for Christmas. Um, she's been doing really good in school. She's remotely completing high school online right now, and it's been challenging, but I'm very proud of her. She's been doing great. Here in Michigan, we've been shut down because of the Rona. Mm-hmm. I feel you, baby. That dirty Rona, bruh. That's that long AIDS, baby. Let me call you. See what we can do. Hello? Hey, what's up? Who's this? Hey, it's Susie. <laughs> what up, Susie? What up, Theo? <laughs> you what are you doing just chilling i just what am i doing not much just, just drank some water just um making some phone calls doing some podcasting what are you up to oh my gosh i'm actually cooking dinner <laughs> cooking uh, dinner family. oh nice what are y'all having mara mara theo's on the phone <laughs> uh we made some we made raviolis green beans and damn uh beans and some marinara sauce damn y'all must be rich huh no <laughs> that sounds good are you a good cook um pretty good i like to cook there we go um i want to thank you first of all just for, for thinking of somebody else and just you know calling and leaving your voicemail um or not really thinking about somebody else but of just thinking of your of your daughter and uh <laughs> you know i thought it was really sweet of you um, the problem is we already gave away the PS5, but I wanted to try and think of something else that we could do that you think uh, would be nice. Oh my God. I don't even know what to say. And, um, sh she's still upstairs by the way. Um, how about this? I, I know it's kind of impersonal, but what if we just gave you like a $500 gift card and you could do something nice for you guys, something that you wanted to do? Uh, I know it's oh not a PS5, but, um... No, I appreciate it so much. We've, we've been struggling. I mean, I try to, you know, you know, my 
attitude is always positive, but you know, I'm I've been job searching. I oh, mean, yeah, it's tricky out there. And well, look, I'll just trade to you. Hear from you. Just to hear from you is just, just wow. <laughs> speechless. Well, that's sweet of you. Thanks. You know, that makes me feel nice, you know. Uh, but to hear from you was nice, you know. Um, uh-huh. You know, and just to call and, you know, um, I just, I'm grateful to you guys that you guys listen to the, to listen to the podcast and just are a part of this group. And anyway, yeah, let me do that. Let, let me have, uh, I'll have Nick or, or, or Sean follow up with you. Oh, thank you so much, Theo. The, the PS5 has been just crazy. I can't that's what believe. I hear. That's what I, I hear. I this one every year. Look, and that's all she wants, like, for Christmas. And I'm like, oh, my God. I can't believe anybody can even afford those things. Those things are, like, 900 bones, man. Um, I and, know. And, yeah. Well, my family, we were going to, you know, you know you know how like, kids, when they want something, you got to pull through whatever. They were going to give me a couple hundred on it or whatever. But you can't even get a hold of it. Yeah. That's the thing. Because we thought, well, maybe we'll buy something and try to. So, um. Yeah, so, yeah, we'd be happy to help out in that sense. And, uh, yeah, just thank you. Just thank you for making my day, and thanks for the nice words. Ah, Theo, thank you. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you, your family. Like, I love your podcast. I can't wait to hear the next one. Oh, my God, I don't even know. Wow. (laughs) Thank you for the phone call. Yeah, y'all enjoy the raviolis, and uh, you're welcome, Susie. (laughs) For sure, for sure. Thank you. You bet. We love you. Bye-bye. That's cool, man, making a little dinner. I, you know, that's always nice. You know, when I was a kid, we always made dinner. My mom was always working, so, you know, we would always take turns making dinner, man. And we would always act like it was something different, but it was always macaroni. I mean, I think it was macaroni for like 1,600 nights in a row. Like, it was always macaroni. Sometimes we get a can of maybe some sliced pears or something like that in their natural juice. All right, let's take one more call right here. Um, thank you so much. Hey, Theo. Uh, my name's Caroline. I'm from Gastonia, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. Um, <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of this past weekend and also King and the Sting. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for those nice words. My nephew was diagnosed with cancer um, like a year and a half ago, and it was more this year, like quarantine and stuff, when I started getting into your podcast and um, King and the Sting. But I would like look forward to new episodes all the time. Like I was just so sad, and it really gave me something to look forward to. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. You know, it's funny how uh, we all find kind of soulless in different things. You know, some people they want to listen to something. Some people, you know, like a song we were saying earlier, it's, it does something to you. Some people, they, you know, you want to put your hands in a mitten or something. I used to have when I was young this, I got a doormat from somewhere and I put it in my room. So it was near the floor in my room by the door. When you were leaving my room, I had a doormat. And sometimes when I was sad, I'd go put my hands under it for some reason and just sit there with my hands under that doormat. And just, I felt okay. Let's hear more. Um, But I was just listening to your podcast, and I heard about the um, the guy that has the PlayStation. He was wanting to donate, and um, I, my sister, um, so my sister is ten years older than me, but um, she has two kids, and her oldest son Adam, he just passed away in October from cancer. Um, He was sixteen, and then she has. A younger son, Andrew, and um, he will be 15 uh, in the summer. So um, he just lost his brother, and I know she was trying to find, like, something like that, like the new Xbox or the new PlayStation to give to him for Christmas that would kind of be special. But Well, thank you so much for this. Uh, let's um, let me see if I can get a hold of you. Hey, Caroline. Hello. Hey, what's up? This is Theo. I call you called uh, into the podcast the other day from the podcast. Oh my god! Yes. How Holy are you? Holy shit! How are you? I'm today? laying in my floor right now, freaking out. Oh damn! Well, look, just 
You know what I'm saying? Keep your clothes on, Shorty. I don't want to get accused of nothing, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. I was literally just talking about you to my friend. I was, I, I'm, like, speechless right now. I was literally just talking about you. I was like, I don't even listen to music anymore. I just listen to you know, Vaughn in my car and smile and just drive around. Damn. Well, like, said- 20 minutes ago. And now I listen to your voicemail, and now I can. My face is like pulsating. <laughs> oh, damn, well, you you might be on drugs. I think. Damn, I'm like... not. I, I feel like I am, but I'm not. Okay. Well, look, I'm it sounds like if your damn face is pulsating, you might want to g <laughs> up a little bit. You might want to, you know, you might want to use a, a skin softener or something. <laughs> um. No, I just wanted to say your message was so sweet. I thought it was very nice of you to call. And uh, yeah, we wanted to think of something nice we could do because we already gave away the PlayStation. So I'm just trying to think of something else fun that we could do. So we're committed. I think PlayStations are just all sold out. So we're committed to help find like a um, Xbox. Do you think the kids would want that? Or do you think we should just wait and whenever PlayStations no, come back? He, he would prefer an Xbox over the okay. PlayStation. Good. I just heard that guy say PlayStation. I was like, you know what? I'm going to call. I'm sitting in my driveway listening to this. I've never called in or sent in a video or anything. Well, thank and you. Thanks for calling. Yeah, well, thank you. But, you know, he would prefer, he's like a big gamer, so he, like, plays on his computer, but he's been wanting the Xbox so bad. But then when I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, like, PlayStation, whatever. I don't. I don't even know the difference between totally. the two. But I do know that he, um, if he got an Xbox, he would poop in his pants. Well, damn, y'all's whole family need to tighten up. It sounds like, but uh, we do. We're going through stuff. But that's okay. Look, loosen up or tighten up. That's what they say, man. I do both sometimes. <laughs> Oh my God, this is so crazy. But look, we want to, uh, yeah, we'd love to. So whether it's, you know, I'll have one of the producers circle up with you and then we'll figure out if, you know, what what you guys want to do for him. If it's a console or if we, you know, he wants games. I don't know, you know, it's sweet of you to think of your of your nephew and we want to be a part of just, uh, you know, making Christmas a little bit, you know, just do whatever we can to help out. So there oh you God. go. Thank you, Theo. Holy shit. Well, I love you over there. I love you, too. All right, y'all be good. All right, stay off them Percocets, girl. You know it. Okay, I will. (laughs) Okay, deal. (laughs) Deal, deal. And I will, too. Okay. Okay, deal. Okay, deal. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Oh, man, that's great. That's sweet. All right, I think we had, uh, you know, just a fun enough episode um, I'm really excited to announce that on this oh, January, uh, January 15th at 7 p.m. at at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central. Uh, Theo and Tammy, who is Chelsea Lynn, she came on the podcast a while back. We're going to be doing a live event. Um, it's going to have sketches, it's going to have musical guests. Um, I'm nervous about it. I never done no sketches like that, but I am excited about it at the same time. I'm just trying to be brave. So, you know, we'll see what it is and what it ain't, but it's new times, man. Things you can, you can watch things live. You could be, you'll be able to buy a ticket to it. I think the tickets are $10. Um, it's going to be really neat. We're putting a lot into the production as much as we can. I mean, it's going to be, oh Lord. I mean, they are wild and little Jim is there and he's beautiful. Little, just, just a damn, just a little thick, little sugar termite, bro. And he's beautiful. Just one of God's damn bunions, this little fella, this little crispy cracker. And, uh, but it's, anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. And so I hope you will join us that night and check it out. If you have a talent or don't have a talent. Um, keep tabs on the this past weekend uh, Instagram. We're going to be uh, accepting talent and talented and untalented people because the show that we're putting on is a belated Christmas talent extravaganza. That's what it's going to be, and that's going to be on January fifteenth. So uh, be there, be there. It's going to be cool. Um, 
what else man that's really it you know we're heading into the holidays um and it's a weird year to go into the holidays it feels strange you know there's not as many places you can go where the decorations are up and some cities and towns aren't doing you know even putting up putting up any decorations it's just a weird year uh but we still got each other baby you know, and even on tough days, man, I know that that's the right thing. Is not to give up on the people around us. Because they want us to out there. They want us to fight. They want us to hate. You know? They don't want me to go to a black doctor. They don't want me to go to a, uh, to a, um, Middle Eastern, uh, chiropractor. You know? We just got to keep just, we got to just keep connecting, man. That's all it is. That's all it is, baby. Um, you know, and here and there we find comfort. And I want you guys to be good to yourselves, man. You deserve it. And thank you guys so much for loving me and being a part of my life this year. I'm going to play the same song on the way out that we came in, baby. Uh, Larry Fleet's Where I Find God. You guys be good to yourselves, man. A night of hit rock bottom. Sitting on an old bar stool He paid my tab and put me in a cab But he didn't have to Cause he could see I was hurting Oh, I wish I'd got his name Cause I didn't feel worth saving But he saved me just the same Come on now You guys, the same sun just be still. So you can't find peace like this, and a bottle or a pill. From a bar stool to the living room, Sunday morning in the church pew, in a deer stand or a hay field, and then a stay back. Larry. Come on, Larry. Sometimes late at night, I lie there and listen to the sound of her heart beating. The song the crickets are singing. I don't know what they're saying, but it sounds like a hymn to me. For everything. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry! From the bar stool to the living room. Sunday morning in a church pew. In a deer stand or a hay field. And then I stayed back to Nashville. The Chevrolet with the windows down. Me and him just riding around sometimes. Whether I'm Oh, they have 
Amen, baby. Yeah. We got this. Everything's going to be okay. You guys be good to yourselves, man. Gang.